Welcome to the BHOP Network and week 13 of the Weekly Huddle. We are the recovery team with Vance Johnson, hey brother. Chris Jones, yes, McDonald Odin, hey Randy. and Sean Dykes. Hi. And, you know, let's start this segment off by, let, let me ask you, Vance, is Peyton's career over? I'm and glad ever? you asked. We should have talked about 17 this. 17 years later. We should have talked about this before the season even started. And I've been writing some things down. Peyton Manning, unfortunately, because Kubiak coming in as a first-year head coach, had to make some decisions. Everyone wanted to see Peyton play, but I wanted to see Gary Kubiak start out with this, with this team with, just from scratch. Because otherwise, his whole identity is going to be based around Peyton Manning. So let's say they go to the Super Bowl with a Peyton Manning. And Peyton Manning ends up uh, retiring after this year, after he wins the Super Bowl. And then Gary Kubiak come back, comes back next year and wins five games. All of a sudden, he's defined by what Peyton did. Why why they bring him in in the first place? I think Peyton should go ahead and retire, head out to uh, the Cleveland, go, go play with the Browns. And uh, now with Osweiler and playing the way he's played, the Broncos have a great chance of making it to the playoffs and maybe to the Super Bowl. Is he Sunday. the answer? I, I think he is the answer. I think he's wow. always been the answer. Let me ask you a question. Who won this year? Was it the quarterback for the Broncos or defense so far? Who won the games? Defense. defense. <laughs> Who scored the most of the points for the Broncos when it was time to win to score points? Defense. Defense. Peyton Manning also is leading the league in interceptions. I mean, the guys, I wouldn't say washed up, but I think it's time for him to lay it down. But I think well, he's a great quarterback. What you got to think about here is you're talking about Peyton Manning and QBX's uh, legacy. I think it's Elway more than anything trying to establish himself. I mean, he's got a Super Bowl ring as a player, but now he wants to get one as a general manager. So I, I think that's what that's all and about. And that's probably was that was the Russell, I'm sure, between Peyton Manning, uh, Kubiak, and Elway in the very beginning. Right. But Elway should have thought about this. I, I think Elway, because he has been friends with Gary Kubiak for a lot of years, and it's just a matter of time before they win a world championship anyway. Right. Kubiak's going to be a, there it's, it's for about, the next it's about, years. It's about Elway's establishing his legacy as a general manager. And so you he's already with, done that as a so quarterback. So he should have done that with, with, um, with Manning? Well, he's doing it now. Yeah, but, but but will that kid offer the leadership qualities that they're going to miss with Peyton? Well, not only is he going to offer the leadership qualities, but but he's going to go out there and he's going to prove it. I mean, he's six foot eight. The guy's young. He's he a is great huge. quarterback. He's from Arizona huge. State. But I, I think he still needs and the guys to, respect him. Yeah, and this is the thing, though. He has a great teacher in Peyton Manning as it relates to off the field, on the field. So I think he's in the right position. I don't think Peyton is done yet. I think when he's healthy, I think they need to put him back in there because he has all the experience it takes to take go to the next level. These young kid doesn't. They I'm have to wait to. This is disagree. what we've done. Let me I'll say this because fascia. when you put guys out I'll there too I'm soon, I'm glad we aren't talking and arguing on TV right now because of plantar <laughs> fascia for a guy who can't even run in the first place. How is he going to come back and be able to do anything with that injury? Hits? I agree. Right. I had a plantar fascia. I, I did know. too. Okay, I but know this how is bad my point. Hurt. When you take a young guy like that and you start him out too fast, too much. We see what happened to so many other quarterbacks that you know they look good in the very beginning, and after that they fizzle out. You don't even hear about them anymore. I think the only team I that's I think I, the only team that's undefeated has a quarterback that's young. Who are we talking about? But he's learned the hard way also. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Okay. He so he time. had his, he had his moments, but what I'm saying is this guy's in the great position. He's he's got a great teacher uh, for his leadership on the field and off the field. I think let it you know let so it take his course. Come back or not? Yeah, I think he should come back. I think so. I think come so, up. let's see if we agree to disagree about Chip Kelly. Is wow. he out, is he out <laughs> of Philly? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? <clears throat> that's sad to say because that's a good question for Jeffrey Lurie also. Mm-hmm. Uh, I well, really he's wanna, the one that started yeah, it. He's the yeah, one that gave him all, gave him all his control. He gave him too much control, I feel, for a college coach to come in this league who really ain't put his footprint in this league and give him that type of power. Yeah. And uh, he got to understand, he's saying the hard way now, nah, this is mm-hmm. not college. <laughs> you know, it, it take a couple of years. You see, when they come in with these new offenses, it, these people got a year long to study these offenses, right. and you see that it's collapsing right now. Yeah, but, it's not forgiving him either, are they? Oh no, that blue collar town right now. Uh, I, I can't imagine the radio talk shows right now. <laughs> I'm, I really, I, I absolutely know that he can't go out to eat right now. <laughs> I bet he can't go out to eat right now. I know he's got, he's, he's got, to, he's got to get some take on. I'm serious. I'm sure he's not scared of the game. He's got to order Chinese food. He's got to get Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious <laughs> note, but uh, and seriously though, uh, he hurt the team. He, he let a lot of core players go. Mm-hmm. You know that was locker room guys. And you see putting these young guys out there, and they really ain't asking the question. You know, and it's just sad to see that. Uh, you hear his name always swirling back, going back to college. You had USC saying that he did. They did contact him and talk to him. Mm-hmm. Now he's stating that he did. Right. So, come on, why were representatives live from USC? Yeah. So, I really don't know what's going on. Then you see that he have Tennessee. Mm-hmm. 
think talking about a trade to get him back with Mariota. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. So that might be a good fit for him. I think they need a clear house. Up. Well, Bill and I good. was talking earlier about um, – you know, Jimmy Johnson did this when he first got in the league, too. He came in with that college mentality. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, and that, I think that's what he came in with. He came with that college mentality, and you can't really win like that in the NFL. It's a different, it's a different dynamic when you're talking about the two entities. So but I that's think how that, they know to be successful. Exactly. That's how true. they were successful. In the and we've seen it over history. You well, you know, John McKay, a lot of people. Absolutely. Have seen San Francisco, you got Seattle, they have young coaches, too. They do the same right, way. but they changed the mentality really quick, though. I mean, you look at Jimmy Johnson, he turned that thing around after he kind of lost that, you know, talking to the guys, all the guys that was on the team saying, hey, this is not college, man. But they had to so, learn the hard way. They had to learn the hard way. It You're took him right. two, three, four yeah. years. Right. Sure. He went only right. 15. He was 1-15 in the first year. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. His first year there, he was 1-15. So mm -hmm. I think it's a natural thing, like you guys say. They come in with that mentality because they've been successful with that and they want to bring him here. But I think one of uh, Kelly's biggest problem was, I think, you know, when we talked about this before, you know, you have to have system players. Players have to be able to fit in your system. He was successful because the players he had fit in his system. Then he got rid of all those players. Mm -hmm. Now he brings his new crop of guys. They don't actually fit, and you see that now. It's fizzled out. Look where he is. He's... You know, these guys are not, they don't, they're not comfortable because they've seen him get rid of guys before. So they're kind of like on borderline, am I going to be here? I think they got too much to think about. That's what I believe. See, you got to understand on. that if you really think about it, what's he always shipping out a player. Right. So if a player speak up. They figure they may not be there. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no job security, in other words. No. Well, is there any job security in New England? <laughs> can the Patriots survive all the injuries that they've had? I, I think they can. Uh, <clears throat> the Patriots, they're still a great ball club. Uh, uh, here for the past couple of weeks, they've had to, it has to be uh, 17 players, including the officials and plus the, uh, the other 11 players. Are you talking because, about the Bronco game because of the officials? No, not, not, not only the Bronco game, but... <laughs> but that was one of the games, but uh, prior to that, that was a game before that, that the officials, I think they have really been calling some picky calls against the Patriots. That's my opinion. But also, not to mention the Patriots, uh, they have been hit with a lot of injuries. Uh, they've had a lot of their key players who have been out, uh, not to mention that Gronkowski got injured um, on the game uh, He'll be back. this past week. Which, He'll be back. Yeah, he will be back. And, and uh, but... I think the Super Bowl will still have to go through New England. If they lose um, bar, one more game, it's going to go through Denver. Bar none. Well, I think, my, my opinion, people are getting on this Bronco bandwagon. And this kid, this kid, <laughs> this kid, hasn't, this kid has not shown me anything uh, comparing him to Peyton Manning. He can't, to me, he can't carry Peyton Manning's job. Peyton okay? Manning couldn't but have done that point, quarterback sneak the point, for the first down. The, the, point, the point I'm making is, <laughs> the Broncos, and, and, and I'm not sure the Broncos will even go to Super Bowl. Right now, you better go to right, 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 right now, <laughs> right now, the Super Bowl I think will still go through Foxborough. Right now, bar none, uh, provided that uh, players get healthy, New England will still be the team to beat in the NFL. This bar is, none. It's a long way to San Francisco from New England, brother. Well, and you know what? I've always been a Patriot. <laughs> A Patriots guy. Not that I'm a great fan of Patriots, you know, mm -hmm. but you know I'm a fan of football, right. and that is a very well coached, very disciplined team. Yes, so I think is. they can survive anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think even if Brady went down, they can right. survive. Mm -hmm. I think right. Belichick has that kind mm -hmm. of skill set, and I think he has that kind of relationship. And they have enough veterans on that team to pull them through anything. So but the key is really that's what coaching. I like about yeah. the team. It's the yeah. coaching, absolutely. He's yeah. probably the best coach in the NFL. Well, you guys, you guys picked New England too this weekend, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. that's what I Yes, yes, <laughs> and, and, and you know what? And and and, and having not been for, as I said, the sixth, the twelfth man, which wasn't it was the, the referee, right? Well, exactly, yeah, it true. wasn't the fans. It, it it was the officials. The officials, uh, uh, by the commentators' admission, made several crucial calls that that turned the, the outcome of the game Randy, around. Let's go to a break. <laughs> let's go to Green Bay. Let's talk about the three losses in a row with Green Bay. What's well, going I, I, on think, up there? I think they've kind of lost their way a little bit too. But I tell you what, Chicago. Aaron Rodgers kind of got on this, you know, this week about uh, preparation. I think their preparation hasn't been what it normally is, and I think Aaron Rodgers spoke up. There's rumors about a, uh, only um, a, a players only meeting, but 
This is just a moon right. Well, you should have one of those every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they're thinking about having one, and, and, and they're also thinking about getting back to the basics, man. They've kind of gotten a little bit away from what they normally do, and that's play some hard-nosed defense. Right, we know yeah. they got a great defense. Now, they got some of their key players out, too. But I'm, And we see Rodgers haven't been playing the way normally because some of the offensive linemen are kind of banged up, and he's been getting sacked and getting hit a little bit. And he's kind of like, you know, a Brady. You know, when you get him, get to him a little bit and you go to ride him a little bit, they kind of lose their way. I think they just got to get back to the basics. I think they are going to have that team only meeting and where these leaders are going to have to take. Once again, we always talk about leaders coming up, standing up, taking charge of the locker room, getting these young guys on board so they can get back to it. And I think Green Bay is going to be in the thick of things when it gets right down to it so, because they are that type of team, that caliber team. So, Sean, do you think it's the play call? Because you know that the head coach gave up his offensive coordinator duties oh. this year. Um, maybe, you know, maybe Rodgers need to take that back or maybe they need to do something. That's what I said. They're going to get back to the basics. So it may be that thing there where they're getting back to the basics and do what they did before when they were being very successful offensively and defensively. Gotcha. I mean, you know, so that's it. And today is the 30-year anniversary of the Snow Bowl that I played in in 1985. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Couldn't even see the field. Wow. It really? was probably 10 below. It snowed uh, I don't know, a couple feet during the game. Did you go yeah. sleeveless? I did go sleeveless. Wow. You got to. You had to. Okay. He goes pants as long as <laughs> But every time I think of Green Bay, man, I, I, it makes my joints hurt. We'll be right back. I remember walking out to the gate, and I stood there, and I looked up into the sky, and I said, Really, God? Really? This is how you want me to get well? You want me to be around a whole bunch of guys that are sick? that I don't believe are like-minded like me, that aren't looking to, for sobriety the way I'm looking for sobriety. And I heard a small voice said, yes, Vance, you have to get well amongst the sick because you're just like them. Welcome back to the B-Hop Network in week 13 of the weekly huddle. And guys, we're all certified recovery coaches here. How can we best be utilized in the NFL? And what, what I'm saying is, how can we provide structure and accountability for guys like Johnny Manziel, guys like, well, even in baseball, you know, well, Josh Hamilton, even the owner, Ursay, mm -hmm. you know, I know that he had a recovery coach for a while. Well, the, the best way I think we can be utilized first is give us a call. That's the first thing we can right. do is give us a call. If you watched the game last night, you saw Johnny Manziel obviously wanting to get in the ball game, but it's all they talked about was the problem that he was having off the field. And... At the end of it, they had no solution. Well, recovery coach is a solution. And there's so many different ways and things that a recovery coach can do. And as I was uh, going through this long booklet of a test that we ended up having to take, I was kind of looking at some of these things that it talked about the day in life of a recovery coach. And this is something just not just specific to ball players, but us as former professional mm -hmm. athletes, this is kind of what our coaches watched us do as we were practice. Mm -hmm. You wake up, you have meditation, you have fitness, <clears throat> you have breakfast, you work out. Uh, you have a proper lunch, you have meetings, you have events, you have sober activities. That's something that you can always be involved with. Um, then you go through some more meditation and you just think about what's going to be happening afterwards. And if you have a, a counselor um, that works with the team or a psychiatrist, they can't, after they're off the clock, they're not going to do anything for you. Right. Mm -hmm. A coach is going to watch you during practice and during the day, but he can't do anything for you afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's the times afterwards where we can come and be involved and be able to spend time with, talk to these guys about everyday tools that they're going to need for a lifetime in recovery. And what is that? All that is is accountability and structure. That's and that's the thing that athletes, you know, we thrive on. I remember getting an itinerary at the beginning of every day. And, you followed, and, it. and I followed it. And I needed that. I needed that direction. But people think that once you go to treatment that everything's going to be fine when you leave. And that's not the case at all. The hardest part is leaving and going back home to those people, places, and things that got you there in the first place. Yeah. And whether you're a recovery coach, transition coach, life coach, whatever it is, people need that. They need that extra help, that extra accountability, that extra structure to get over the hump, and, and that's leaving treatment and in the, the initial months after that. So, so real quick, when I was in the NFL, and, and they didn't have the name recovery coach, no. um, but Hollywood Henderson, who was a good friend right, of ours, right. actually came to work for the Broncos, and he was a basic recovery coach for Clarence K., who had problems off the field with... Before they even had recovery coach. Before coaches. they even had recovery coach. And I remember seeing this guy on the football field. I remember him seeing him out to dinner with Clarence K. I remember mm -hmm. him seeing a lot of different things with Clarence. And I thought he was just showing Clarence how to play tight end. But I didn't even know Hollywood was a defensive end. Mm -hmm. So he was there actually spending time in his life. And while Hollywood was in his life, 
We didn't have problems with Clarence K. But as soon as Hollywood left, after a few games, things start, started to get But, but think about it this way, too. You know, when you talk about it, you know, to someone who doesn't know what a recovery coach is or if we're either, even needed. But think about this. You, you, there was 143 players suspended this year alone. Right. Okay, now not all of it wasn't for substance abuse, but, you know, off the field antics and whatever the case may be. So that itself establishes need. There was over $20 million in fines that were paid by players, but they were suspended for one reason or another. And then you got, um, you know, 227 games lost. And they could have spent a fraction of that with a life coach, a recovery right. coach. So think about this. If you're in regular corporate America and you lose 143 employees, your company just pretty much folded. $20 million? <laughs> He's at $20 million in salary. So that's a need right there. So the NFL ought to see that and say, hey, well, we do need a recovery coach. And they need to go around and start you know, seeking us out, like you said, and putting us in these individual teams. And if that's the case, put one on each team. They got a player program guy that does that's his right. part. So have, hire one for one to, you know, for each team. And that way you have that person in place if you have a player that's in trouble. Even not just for the drug, but the off-the-field antics, too. Great they point. need that leadership. They need that accountability, like Randy just said. So it is a need that's, you know, for a recovery coach right now, and they really need to look into that. Look, you know, guys, uh, as we were just talking, you know, we were talking about recovery coaches, but also I think we need to uh, keep in mind that the individual themselves, whether it's a professional football player or whoever, just your everyday Joe, Joe Blow, a person has to want help. They have to be sick and tired of living their life in misery. Uh, a recovery coach can only do so much. There's a, a, a lot of responsibility has to lie on that person. I agree, but that, I, that, I, I, that, I agree that, that I, that, I disagree that, too, that, though. That, that too. individual. And I say it because until, and, and I always want to keep this in first person singular, meaning me. Until I was ready to get help, until I had I lost my career, I was homeless. But until I was ready to get help, did I not seek help? Well, Mac, that's why we have rehabilitation facilities. But we're talking about recovery coach. And you know if you're paying recovery. a guy $40 million, the coach and the general manager and the owner can decide who's well, going to be walking around with you making sure that you drink is, on that sippy if, cup. And if, if I person, was an agent, I would make sure if, too. If, if that person... person whether, but again, I'm saying that if that person who you're coaching, if that individual does not want help, whether you're paying, whether they're paying you forty millions or whatever, it's not going to work. Let's test that person, theory. Let's person, test that theory. A, 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 person, it, though, a person, a person has it, it's if all you out. If, if you were out with Johnny Foot, it all falls down on what I want. When he was rapping and singing and mm -hmm. he was drinking on champagne, if you were standing there behind mm -hmm. him, he would not have done that. Done that. You know what? You know what? If Johnny, if I said Johnny don't do that, you know what? When you're sick, when you're sick, which I think that when we're in, in our disease, we all are sick. You don't think that Johnny knew or knows right or wrong. Case, but, but when you're in your addiction, when you're in your addiction, you're not going to listen to in anyone. That in that case, your obligation as a recovery coach is to go to the team. Go to the general manager, go to the owner, go to the coaches and say, this guy needs to go back into rehab. But listen to this. I, 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 I think Mac is right. I think both of you guys are right. But you got to look at it like this, too. I think if you can sit there and you can give a guy all the reasons why you shouldn't be doing that. Because sometimes they don't know. And, and we've all said this, too. You know, we felt like Superman that our career would never end. But if we're sitting there and we're giving the guys the pros and cons, man, if you continue this lifestyle, yeah, you will be broke. You won't have anything. Do you have to get to that point where you've lost everything, self-respect to your people, your friends, your family, before you get the message? And that's what a recover coach Sean, can how, do. How we can point that out, Sean. Sean. you got to remember, think about it. All the times when we was hanging out, when we was in the league, we hear stories when the guys coming in mm -hmm. from, from a night out. When they got fined and all of that, you're trying to tell me if they had a recovery coach in place, they could be saving their money, for one, and they can be saving their lives. No, but basically all we can and do is... We, we, and we, jobs. Well, my, my thing is this. All we can do is put it out there for them. You know, once again, we're talking about young kids with millions and millions of dollars. I'm not saying it's going to change. I think Mac has a, a valid point. you got to want to change more than anything. Sure you got to want to help. Okay, that's the first thing. But I think if we're sitting there and we're ironing it out, man, look, you can lose your money. Especially you guys, we've been through that. You can lose all your money if you stay on this route, man. On this road you're on, you, you can go totally them. broke. You can lose self-respect. The how decision is ultimately theirs. How, how did you learn to play? Repetition. So right. you have a recovery coach with repetition, Absolutely. always in this guy's face mm -hmm. every day. Eventually, something's going to change in his life. Well, well y'all, no, everybody both, has both. a valid point is what I'm saying. Both both points are yeah. very valid. You know, we're, we're sitting here discussing about 
you can lose money. You can lose your family. You know what? Nine out of ten times, you're going to lose your life. That's well, true. that's what it I, comes down to. I go to meetings. I go to meetings every day, and yesterday I was at a meeting, and there were four young people who OD'd just last week alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know they, they say you only have three options: jails, institutions, and death. You know, I've been been through two of those. Yeah. So death, I you know I I'm not saying that I'm the poster boy for recovery, but I do know for a fact that if you continue to go down that route, drinking and drugging, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much money you have, you're going to die. But Mac, that's your message you, as a recovery You're going to die. That's it. That's your it's, message as a recovery yeah. that's that's You it. are going to die. Well, and we know that this is a disease. Right. And we also know that, know that these are not bad people. Right. These yeah. are just sick people. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's our job. You know, we tell them all the time, if you'll just do as we say, as we suggest, have, if you'll do as people that have been successful suggest, like mm -hmm. the program says, your life's going to get better. Right. Sometimes you've got to help them over that hump. Absolutely. You know, they, I mean, we sell that, we sell that, we sell that in treatment, but you know, they got to get out there and they got to experience how much better life's going to get. And typically, and recovery, that's our job. And typically, uh, recovery coaches are after you've had a chance to mm -hmm. go to a rehab facility. Right. Yeah. And the right. good thing we do with that too, we take away that excuse of saying I didn't know. Yeah. See, we take that excuse away. When you got a recovery Good coach and, you, and you're giving your valid story on, hey, this is what can happen, and we give our story on, this is where you end up at the end of the day, totally dead. Mm -hmm. Now, they can't say, oh, nobody told me this was going to happen. That's right. Because now, you know, we've taken that excuse. We have eliminated that excuse for those guys. And we'll be right back. Behavioral Health of the Palm Beaches Recovery Center for Men provides quality, evidence-based treatment to men battling addiction. Offering medical detox, expert counseling from licensed clinical therapists, and activity-based therapies, we help men overcome their addiction and rebuild their lives. We understand the unique substance abuse issues that men face and are ready to help you take your life back. Visit RehabForMen.com to get your fresh start. Welcome back to week 13 of the Weekly Huddle. And Let's talk about Broncos this week. I think the Broncos are going to be fine. You know, we're playing against the San Diego Chargers. They're struggling right now. I think they've only won four games. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the coach actually is calling out their receivers, saying they're not really producing. I think, uh, Who are they playing? They're playing against the San Diego Chargers in San Diego, which is a great place to play. In fact, we have more Bronco fans in San Diego than the Chargers do. <laughs> so I think the Broncos out there with Osweiler at quarterback is going to give him a chance to get another game under his belt, the defense being the number one, number two in the NFL right now. We should not have any problem with those guys. So I am going with the Broncos in San Diego. Well, well, how about Philly? Well, I really don't know the identity of the team right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest with you, because you're hearing all these rumors. Oh, that's a cop out. Huh? Yeah, you're hearing all the rumors with Chip Kelly. You really, you know how guys, they, they glue the ESPN, too, yeah. you know, in the locker rooms and seeing how, the, how he's handling the situation. They mm -hmm. listen to the talk radio. I think about that. You're right. They talk yeah. about that. Yeah, they listen to the talk radios and see where the mental state is. Uh, I just hope that's one of the veterans are stepping up in the locker room and really trying to get these guys to rally around, because, hey, Patriots, they banged up right now. I still see that they piss. I know Tom is pissed from that loss and the way the uh, high ended. Mm -hmm. I think they really gonna rattle around. So uh, I'm going with the Eagles still. <laughs> what? We might soar. Yeah, we might know. soar. Hey, we might. We might. We might get a sympathetic win right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you realize it's in Foxborough, right? I know it's in. You might want to erase this Eagles team <laughs> right now. Well, <laughs> but it's gonna be a tough hill to climb. But hey, it's hard to go against my team. Uh, you're loyal. Well, and I am too. I've got the Falcons coming to Tampa Bay this week. You know, I was talking three-peat last week, and of course that didn't happen, but I do think they're building. A, I'm, I'm sticking with my box. You know, I am a loyalist. A young I, I hate to say it, but I'm a loyalist. A young boy coming along. Uh, he's, he's coming along. The whole team is. Uh, I think Atlanta's probably not what they were at the first of the season. You know, they've had a lot of injuries too. It's at home. Uh, I just like the Bucks' chances. I like them better than I do the Browns. Right. Well, uh, well the Browns <laughs> are. Just you know, the Browns are, are playing the Bengals at Cleveland this week. And I, I believe it or not, I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, Cleveland always plays uh, the Bengals uh, fairly well at Cleveland. Okay. At Cleveland. That's his rapid speed. Yeah. It, it's the well, rivals. You will, you will not be able to buy a battery in the state of Ohio. <laughs> or a dog <laughs> biscuit. <laughs> or a dog biscuit. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Everything's going to be at the stadium. I, I think, yeah, I, you heard it here first. I really think that the Browns will upset the Bengals. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. big. In the dog pound. In the dog pound. Mm -hmm. That's big. In the, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> 
some shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our game of the week happens to be your home team. Yeah, the Jets and the Giants. Um, that's going to be a good game. Yeah, I, I think um, you know the Jets are doing okay right now. We we won the game. We got you know we won big. We're one game behind the Patriots since they lost. So we're right in the thick of things. I think we but we can't lose from here on out. I think we have to be. You know, very competitive. I would like to see them get the ball to Marshall more. I mean, this guy's on fire, man. Every time they throw the ball his way, he's he's making some fantastic catches. And I think they need to get the ball to him. But I think what happens is if they can't, you know, uh, Fitzpatrick has to really, you know, switch that thing up and get that ball to all the other guys that are out there because I think they're double-teaming Marshall a whole lot. So I think if we can just continue to get the ball to him more um, and, and be mistake-free, play a little solid defense, I think we're going to be right in the thick of things. Like I said, we're one game behind the Patriots. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking Philadelphia going to be the Patriots this year. So, I mean, this week. So, we'd be good. You know, we'll, we'll take them. I want you to win, man. I got you. <laughs> well, I know, what, I know what game the three quarters of the state of Florida would be watching. <laughs> Jets and Giants. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think Fitzpatrick, he's doing a great job at uh, quarterback for the uh, Jets. And I, I really think that the Jets will beat the Giants this weekend. Oh, good, good. Well, Vance, what do you think? Well, you know, I, I think that I, we're going to send a Manning. Peyton up to play behind his brother next year. So that's why they got both you in New you York. Imagine? So, um, Boy, so next year, they, so next year I think they're going to have a better chance to win this ball game. But I'm going with the Jets, bro. Right. I'm going with the Giants because uh, Darrell Reeves is out due to concussion. Yeah. I really feel like Odell Beckham going to. They're going to exploit that secondary. Okay. So I'm going with uh, the And he's one-handed catches, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to go with the Giants, too. I just I like I like the team. I like I like the amount of veterans they have on. They're relatively healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, it's at home. So yeah. uh, I like the Giants. Okay, well, y'all know I'm going to come in with a whole lot of swag next Okay, time. all right. <laughs> We're ready for it. And that's it for this week's segment of the Weekly Huddle. And as always, if you or anybody you know is sick and suffering from this disease of addiction, Get in touch with us. You know, you can get in touch with us at bhpalmbeach.com, uh, Athletes in Recovery. We all have Facebook pages. And I just want everybody to know that there is hope we can help.